Chapter 1. The Lost Knight. Exactly a decade had elapsed since Batman's vanishing. From that moment, the Dark Knight had become an elusive specter, with various speculations surrounding his fate. Some asserted that he had met his demise, succumbing to the toll of countless battles. Others argued that he had sustained too many injuries, rendering him incapable of continuing his crusade. Another faction insisted that age and weariness had finally caught up with him, prompting his withdrawal. A prevailing notion held that Batman had grown disenchanted, questioning the feasibility of altering Gotham City's bleak destiny. Some even dared to assert that Batman had been nothing more than a myth, a figment of collective imagination. The confines of Arkham Asylum would never be adequate to restrain the burgeoning population of Gotham's criminally insane. One who disappears in Arkham, inspires two others to begin. As time elapsed, the details of the past became increasingly obscured, allowing room for varied interpretations. However, the enigma surrounding Batman's fate was poised to unravel in an unforeseen manner. Could Gotham endure indefinitely without its masked guardian? More crucially, was the city prepared for his resurgence? But this time, the decision lay not in the hands of Gotham City nor the Dark Knight himself. Another, equally dark figure, shrouded in darkness and madness akin to those incarcerated in Arkham, had assumed the mantle of decision-maker. The question of Bruce Wayne's role lingered, as Gotham braced itself for the impending revelation. When Alfred found no trace of Bruce within the vast expanse of Wayne Manor, despite the assurance that he hadn't ventured outside, which was an information that Bruce typically shared, Alfred instinctively headed to the one place where he consistently located him, the Batcave. Throughout the years, he had harbored the wish to permanently seal off this underground wing of the mansion. The Batcave, with its associations to Bruce's metamorphosis into Batman and the inherent perils, never sat well with Alfred. His preference leaned heavily towards the more illuminated sections of the mansion, the ones envisioned by Thomas Wayne, Bruce's father. Secretly, Alfred experienced a sense of relief when Bruce, a decade ago, declared a hiatus from his Batman persona. Deep down, Alfred believed this hiatus would be indefinite. He not only hoped for it but also endeavored to reassure Bruce that Gotham required the presence of Bruce Wayne more than that of Batman. Ultimately, Bruce had relinquished both roles, and Alfred had silently rejoiced at the prospect of a life beyond the shadows and dangers associated with the Batcave. A few weeks prior, Alfred had been taken aback to discover Bruce in the Batcave, seated at his old desk, lost in contemplation amid the silence and darkness. All the monitors were deactivated, and the lights extinguished. In this haven, Bruce didn't require the guise of Batman to exude an air of darkness, as Bruce himself, he could seamlessly embody that shadowed demeanor. His thoughts projected a more somber image than even the Batsuit could convey. Observing from a distance, Alfred, his voice tinged with apprehension, ventured, Master Bruce, I can't help but fear that something weighs heavily on your mind. Perhaps you cannot make peace with the fact that Gotham has gone on to its own destiny without Batman. That in Gotham sky, as wide as it is, there is no more room for the bat signal. After a few seconds of silence, Bruce replied, on the contrary, my dear Alfred, on the contrary. I hope it can stay that way. And Alfred, but if you're down here, that means you're not convinced. I hope you are right. It certainly wouldn't be the first time. A few weeks later, Alfred knew that he had to look for Bruce again in the Batcave. But this time he was aware that he had not been right. Bruce once again found himself before his desk, engrossed in his research. This time, the monitors were illuminated, and he was so absorbed in his investigations, that he remained oblivious to Alfred's presence. Alfred didn't even need to ask about the nature of his preoccupation. Silently, 
He placed the latest edition of the Gotham Gazette on the desk, beside the keyboard. The headline, both lucid and arresting, conveyed a sense of unease rarely experienced in years, strange attacks shape Gotham City. I presume this is the source of your concern, Alfred remarked. A swift glance at the monitor confirmed Alfred's suspicion even before Bruce responded. The headline is not entirely accurate, Alfred. The attacks haven't occurred yet. It seems more like a threat. Or perhaps a prelude, a coincidence anticipating their actual execution, Alfred suggested. In the past few days, several bombs had been found near the city's focal points, schools, hospitals, offices, public facilities, even inside cars parked near busy intersections. Their destructive potential would have been such that, altogether, they could have caused thousands, if not tens of thousands of casualties, and unleashed unparalleled panic among Gotham's inhabitants. However, none of the devices detonated. Despite their meticulous construction, a crucial triggering mechanism was consistently absent, rendering them inert. In essence, these devices posed no actual danger, no resident of Gotham City was ever at risk. Yet, the individuals responsible for depositing these potentially lethal instruments demonstrated the capability and means to orchestrate a massacre, if they so desired. I'm searching for meaning in all this, Bruce said. No claim no trace, no signature. No one generates such attention, creates so much hype without a motive. Often ideological. And Alfred, I hope the police can swiftly direct the investigation toward a resolution. He hoped to eliminate any involvement for Bruce. Or, what he feared most, a resurrection of Batman. A few days elapsed without any developments on the matter. Whenever Alfred couldn't find Bruce anywhere in Wayne Manor, whenever he skipped a meal, whenever he did not follow his routine, he knew exactly where Bruce was. Yet, the prospect of descending into the Batcave remained a scenario Alfred preferred to avoid. One day, however, events had developed to such an extent that he could no longer avoid it. He had to go down. He hoped he would not find Bruce in front of the monitor. He hoped that he had decided to abandon the matter. He was wrong. The Tundorn monitors illuminated Bruce's face, leaving the vastness of the Batcave in absolute darkness. Master Bruce, Alfred said. A few years ago, eight years ago to be exact, I polished the Batsuit for the last time. I parked the Batmobile for the last time. I locked up all the weapons for the last time. For eight years I had hoped it would be the last time. And in recent years I had become more and more certain. A profound hush enveloped the surroundings. Alfred broke the silence, suggesting, as expansive as Wayne Manor may be, the world beyond its walls is even more vast. Believe it or not, it can offer a livelier atmosphere than this cavernous mansion, Arkham, or Gotham City. Since your computer is active, why not consider booking a pleasant trip? How about Europe? Ponder the myriad of interesting experiences. Bruce interjected, they've taken action once more. However, this time, it didn't go unnoticed. I shouldn't speak in the plural, though. Numerous witnesses observed a masked individual planting multiple devices. Similar to the others, they were non-functional. Yet, I'm certain he intentionally made himself visible, 